Hello class, so this week's lecture is based on air masses, mid-latitude cyclones, and weather maps. So for this first slide, we'll be talking about air masses, and an air mass is a large body of air that is characterized by its moisture content and te temperature. So they are typically a thousand miles or more wide, so signifying that these large air masses can usually take up half of the United States uh, when they come to, when they travel. So um, there are, these air masses are also classified by its source region. So meaning that these air masses generally form in a region where it's flat and there's light surface winds. So this body of air can take up the characteristics of the re of the surface below it. So for example, um, the snow-covered Arctic plain, when you have an air mass over this um, the snow-covered snow Arctic plain, this air mass will take up the characteristics of being cold and dry because it's originating over land. Um, the same applies to um, the ocean when an air mass is above staying a long time over the ocean, it will take up the characteristics of the subtropical ocean, so the air mass will be warm and humid. So there are four basic types of air masses. Uh, for one, there is continental polar. So C stands for continental and P stands for polar. And C stands for continental here, as well as T in this case stands for tropical. So in both, in both of these, they originate over land. So the air mass is originating over land because of the C um, classification. But P and T, um, it, it originates at different latitudes. So for P, it's originating from the higher polar out latitude so it's colder so that's why in this case it's dry cold whereas continental tropical it's originating this air mass is originating from the tropical region so it'll be warm and and originate from the lower latitudes as well so it'll be dry warm and Again, we see the PT occurring again, meaning polar and tropical, but in this case it's different because it has a classification of M. M stands for maritime, so this means the air mass originated from a large body of water. So for this case, maritime polar, it originated um, in the colder oceans and higher latitudes, so it's humid cold, and then maritime tropical, this originates in the subtropical ocean, which makes it humid warm, so in the lower latitudes. So there's a diagram that will better show the location of each. So again, what we just mentioned, maritime tropical, it's coming from the lower latitudes, so the tropical region, and then maritime polar, it, this circle, you can think of the circle as that large body of air mass and it's forming over the ocean um, at the higher latitudes of the polar regions. And the same applies to continental polar air mass and the continental tropical air mass. And this is the same type, MP and MT. So you can see that these air masses originate outside of the United States, but um, these air masses are traveling um, due to the wind, so the wind is carrying these air masses and they are traveling to the United States, and this is where these air masses can interact with each other. And when they interact with each other, um, they form a front. So for the next slide, fronts, they are boundaries that separate different air masses, um, different air masses of different temperature and humidity. So as we see here, um, the maritime tropical air mass, it's warm and warm and humid compared to the continental polar, it's cold and dry. 
So when these two different air masses interact with each other, it creates a boundary. So air masses associated with the front moves faster than the other air mass. So a boundary will only form with the air mass that is overtaking the other air mass. So whichever air mass is dominant and moving faster, that's the air mass that's going to form a front. Um, there are three types of fronts, which is number one, the warm front, two, a cold front, and three, an occluded front. So as we can see in this diagram, in this warm front, you have your warm air mass right here, right behind the warm front. And this warm front is advanced, this warm air is advancing, um, and it, the warm air is riding above the cold air. So since this warm front is advancing faster than this cold air mass, it's going to create a boundary, which is this warm front line. And then the warm air is going to ride above the cold, dense air. And then it's going to form clouds. And this is where you'll have a moderate precipitation. And then again, in this case, this is a cold front. And you have the advancing cold air behind the cold front. And this is this cold air is moving faster than the warm air, so it's overtaking the warm air mass. And because the dense cold air is um, sinking to the ground, it's more dense than warm air, it's forming a wedge as you can see. So this wedge as it moves, it's pushing the warm air up and forming cloud development. And here you'll have heavy precipitation. Also, um, next is the occluded front. So this only happens when there is a cold front already formed and a warm front already formed. So in this case, let's say the cold front is right here and the warm front is right here. This cold front is traveling really fast and it caught up to the warm front. And as it caught up to the warm front, you see that um, it creates this boundary where there, the symbology is called an occluded front because that's when the cold front overtakes the warm front. And then again, you have a cloud development here um, due to frontal lifting. So that's an occluded front. Uh, next is mid-latitude cyclones. So for mid-latitude cyclones, um, this is a short description, but these are storm systems that occur in the United States um, and they travel from west to east and they last a few days to more than a week. Um, most contain a warm and cold front and they can develop an occluded front. So as you can see here in this low pressure system, cyclonic system, it's showing you a warm front and a cold front and the blue shadow is represent, representing pre precipitation. And then, um, as you can see, the warm air is behind the warm front, and then the cold air is behind the cold front. So if this, so this can, so the cold front can catch up to the warm front, and that's what will cause the occluded front. And then also, again, there's cloud development, and that's why there's precipitation here along the front. Next, we'll be talking about weather station analysis and forecasting. So this is a weather station model. And for this, it tells you the wind, temperature, weather, dew point, sky cover, pressure trend, and sea level pressure. So I'll first start out with the wind. So for the wind, um, this line that's sticking out from the center this is telling you wind direction. So wherever the line is pointing to, it's telling you where the wind direction is coming from. So it's coming from this direction. So it's north. It's a northwest direction. The little lines that you see sticking out right here, they're telling you the wind speed. So this long line is a value of 10, and this short line is a value of 5. So together, the wind speed is 15. 
the top value that you see right here is temperature and then the bottom value you see right here is dew point and these three dots tells you the type of weather the station is experiencing uh, the center of the station model it's sky cover and the negative six with that um, sign it's called the pressure trend and the value above it is the sea level pressure so in your lab I want you to be specific on your the air pressure so to do that um, follow this rule for numbers that begin with 0 to 4 you would add a 10 and for numbers that begin with 5 to 9 you would add a 9 to the front so in this case it's a 107 so the first number is a 1 so we're going to add a 10 to it and then also a decimal before the last number so in, in total this is what your value should look like 10 10.7 so I want you to be specific, so please answer it in this format. And you will also be looking at station models in a, a weather map because I want you to identify where a cold and warm front is. And I wanted to give this example because this will show you how to properly locate a cold front. So when you look at the weather map in your lab, I want you to look at the individual station models and I want you to look at the temperature. So temperature will tell you where the, the cold front is or a warm front. In this case, we're looking at a cold front. So a drastic change in temperature will tell you where your front is located. So in this case, since we know that temperature is a top value, um, it's telling us this is 39, 39, 37, and 36. And then when we see this weather station model, it's telling us it's 50, 56, and 49. So you can see a drastic change in temperature. So this is a good indicator that our cold front can be put here. Um, also, I'm just using it in a hypothetical way because you guys will be choosing a picture that correctly represents the cold and warm front. So that's a good indicator of the cold front. And then also another thing you can look at is that you can look at wind direction. So the wind direction, remember it's the line that's connected to the center of the station model. and we can see that it's coming from a northwest direction. Again, in this station model, it's coming from a northwest direction, northwest direction. And then outside of the cold front, we see that the wind direction shifts and we see it's coming from a southwest direction, southwest direction, southwest direction. So that's a good indicator to identify where a cold front is on the weather map. And you could also look at the pressure and how it's falling, as well as the type of weather. So um, this is what you will all be working with on your lab. So please let me know if you have any questions. And thank you for watching.